So this time each week you can join us for um, question and answer. If you've got a question, put it in the comments below. This week we're going to be doing a hive split. So if you're interested to know how to split your hive and get two hives from one beehive, then tune in. There's, there is a lot to it, so I will be explaining a lot of information along the way. So the first thing is to just uh, be aware of what's going on in the hive and what you need to achieve. The, what you need to end up with is a queen, a laying queen in both hives, that's the end game. If you don't get a laying queen in the hive, then that colony will slowly die out. So there's a few ways to achieve that. One is to buy in a queen, which comes in a little queen cage. The other way is to let them rear their own. Today, what we're going to do is, is split, do what's called an even split, where we basically take half of the frames out of the brood box here and put them into another hive, and we're gonna let them raise their own queen. Now, that's not necessarily recommended. If you buy in a queen, then you're buying in genetics that a, a queen breeder has put some effort into breeding, whether it be for good production or whether it be for a nice, gentle queen. You can often specify what you want or a hygienic queen. So we're uh, just going to add a little bit of a smoke, smoke to this hive. Now, I'm just g g going uh, between the core flute slider and the screen. You can also smoke at the front of the hive. Um, so the next thing is bees are GPS located to their position. So if we simply do a split and take frames out and put them over there, most of the bees will come back to this position, which means that the, the colony we've, we've split and put over there won't get many returning foraging bees, which could be an issue for your colony. So to avoid that, what we're going to do is move this hive over and put the, the one we're splitting into next to it. And we can use that positioning to juggle a little bit to make sure that both hives get an even number of returning bees while they come home. Now, a popular method is to actually get this hive and turn it in that direction and put your new hive basically both facing where the bees are currently coming in. We're not going to do that today because we're on this stand like this. We're just going to move it across a little bit and use the positioning in this direction to help determine um, which hive the bees are, are going to. So next we're going to, uh, we can just take off the, the cover here like this. There is a, quite a lot of bees in this hive. Now they're ready to put a super on and they're also ready to split. So you can choose whether you want to start another colony or whether you want to split, um, split your hive first. And there's many different ways, as, as all things beekeeping, there's, there's many, many different ways to split a hive. So, and it, the conditions in your area will determine what you do also. If you're in a very cold climate, you might decide to split more in a vertical direction and use the warmth of the brood nest below to warm up the one on top. Or if you're limited by space and you've got a whole lot of hives in your apiary, then it might be sensible to split vertically. But today it's nice and warm. We're going to split in the horizontal direction. I'm going to start by just grabbing this hive and moving it across a bit, like so. Then we're going to get the, the new baseboard and put it here. Then on top of that, we'll go our brood box. And we're going to use naturally drawn combs. Now, these frames that we supply do accommodate both uh, plastic foundation, wax foundation and, and wire. So, but I'm going to go with the naturally drawn method, which means we do have to have the hive level in the sideways direction because you want them to hang their comb down off this comb guide and eventually attach it to the lower bar. So I'm just going to put the smoker around near the front so that the gentle 
waft the bees can smell as they come in. Next we're going to take the, um, the lid off just by prising underneath the um, inner cover and go around to each side if it's been there a little while to take the inner cover off. Now you might notice we don't have the flow super on top of this hive and that's we've decided to split it before we've supered it. If you've got the flow super on top you'll need to take that off and put it aside. So you can see here there's quite a lot of bees in the box. If you want to come a little bit closer and what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of smoke right where I'm going to start working and that means there'll be less bees right around these end bars while I'm pulling the frames out. So in order for the bees to raise their own queen, there has to be either bee eggs, which look like a tiny grain of rice in the bottom of the cell, or very young larvae under three days old. So just the faintest little crescent moon in the bottom of the cell. So that's what we're going to look for now. And as I uh, take the frames out, I'm going to put some of them in this box and the idea is to get a nice set of frames in each with and respecting the order that bees like to keep their hives. So they like to have honey on the edge followed by pollen and drone cells followed by brood in the centre. So where possible we'll try and stick to that arrangement because that's how the bees naturally like to keep their hive. So I'm just going to pull out this frame here on the edge, gently, gently, trying not to roll bees as we come up. So there's a little bit of honey in this one. There's also some drone cells, which are the ones that stick out quite proud here. If you have a zoom in on that, that's a typical drone cell. And some over here too. On this side of the comb, let's have a look what we have. Okay, we've got some nice brood here. And if I look down the cells, there is actually some bee eggs in this area. We're very hard to see. Might be best to type in bee eggs into Google and have a look at the pictures so you, before you split your hive you know what to look for. And be aware that when you're using your naturally drawn comb it can be a little bit weak when you tip it over. This one's already joining to the bottom which makes it stronger. I can get a better angle. We've also got the baby larvae down here which you, which you probably can see if you have a look down those cells. They also get called grubs. So that's a good one to split into the next hive. Now the reason why this method's easier is you don't have to find the queen. As long as you put eggs in both boxes or larvae under three days old, they'll be able to raise a queen in the box that doesn't have one. So that makes it a little bit uh, easier. If you are introducing a queen, you'll need to know which box she ends up in, so you will need to find her. Just having a look at this next frame. Okay, this frame's got a lot of capped brood on it, so those bees will emerge in, in um, five to ten days time and that'll be good for the colony if we choose to put that into the, the split because there'll be lots more bees ready to look after the hive. So put that into the 
into the split hub also. Now, let's have a look what's on this cell, what, on this frame. Coming up. Okay. Lots of very young larvae in this area. So the eggs have been laid perhaps a couple of days ago and they're just hatching. And down here, I can also see bee eggs. So considering there was bee eggs in, um, in that first frame we pulled out, I want to make sure there's bee eggs in this, in the one we're splitting from, just in case the queen is on one of these frames we've already put in the box. This hub will also need bee eggs to raise their queen from. So I'll leave that one. Just light, gently smoking the end bars so I don't squash too many bees when I'm pulling the frames out. Now you'll notice the bees have joined these frames together. It's not as useful to, to cut that off as it usually breaks when you pull it out anyway but what you want to avoid is lifting it up and those bits of burr comb scraping into another frame. So there's a drone bee. Nice looking drone there. So drones don't sting, they're a good one to to um, give to your uh, to anyone that is new to beekeeping and wants to have a close look at a bee. They have a lot bigger eyes and a bigger body. In here you can see brood again. Now let's have a look what else we've got. So I'm just looking down those cells and I can see bee eggs on that one too. So I'll give that to the new hive. And that smoke is choking me. <laughs> Let's put it over here. So, we've now definitely got bee eggs in both boxes. So the aim of the game is now to build a nice set of frames in each with brood in the middle, pollen and honey on the outside. So I'm going to lift up this uh, next frame here. Of course, you're keeping an eye out for, for any disease issues while you're doing this. Having a look at that capping, making sure that it doesn't look like AFB or EFB. So, this is a very beautiful brood pattern. I love it when she lays almost every cell like clockwork. That's a sign of a really nice laying queen. We haven't seen the queen yet, and I haven't especially been looking for the queen um, because I'm just gonna let them raise their own. However, if we were introducing a new queen, we would have to find her so we knew which box she was in. Beautiful. There's a lot of nice um, brood in this hive, so these are going to really explode in the next few weeks when all of those bees hatch. So it's a great time to split this hive. The time to split hives is when they're, they're building up, typically in spring. It's not spring here now, but there's plenty of flowers around. So it's still a okay time to split the hive because you want the bees to be able to find good forage and uh, be able to build lots of comb and develop a nice colony. As if you split them 
just before winter for instance, that would be in many places not a very good time to split a hive because they would only have a very small colony and would probably die out. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one with this hive because I've just noticed the next frames all honey. Um, so I'm trying to evenly split the brood between the two. If, if I pull out this frame, then okay, this frame's a little stuck together. So I'm just levering the frames apart. Okay, there's a bit of burr comb going between those two frames. So sometimes your naturally drawn comb can go a bit wonky. That is a very heavy honey frame. You can see that's all honey. Now I'm making a big dripping, sticking mess. So I might just put that back into the hive. So the rest of the frames in this box are honey. So that means only two frames of brood are left in this hive. Um, and we've got one, two, three, four in this hive. So I'm gonna bring one back now. And I'll just put that broken comb back together. I'll get some bees out of the way first because I don't want them pinned in the comb, so I can use a bit of smoke so the bees run off that comb and then put those frames back together with less bees stuck in between them. So I'm going to take one of these frames back. Now notice when I, when I was splitting, I left the bees on the combs, I didn't shake them. That's because you want all of the nurse bees, all of the bees that are with that comb to go to the new split. Um, what I might do is just take this comb here, and take it back to this hive. And now it's a case of just filling in the, uh, the gaps. So if we want them to raise some, uh, to draw some new comb, we want them to draw that on the edge. We're going to keep the brood nest together. Now some people like to break it up with frames in between. I'm not going to do that. Sometimes it can create a, a barrier for the queen to get from one comb to the next. So I'm going to leave the brood nest together and just put some frames either side. Now for those that are ordering a queen in, I'll just run through what you'd need to do for that. So if you order a queen, it's going to come in a little cage like this. And the idea would be to find which hive has the queen in it. And the one without the queen, you'll need to put the new queen into. However, if you just insert a straight in, the chances of success are small. You're better off waiting for at least eight hours before inserting the new queen into your hive that's queenless. So wait a day and insert the new queen in between the combs like so. Now she has a block of candy at the end and that block of candy means that as the bees eat that away, she'll be released into the hive. And the idea is they get used to her scent in that time. So there's a few things to be aware of. If you insert it that way up, um, what you, can, uh, you can have some issues where um, the queen, uh, basically you don't want the queen to be jeopardized inside the cells. So generally you, you point it uh, upwards so that if any of the 
escort bees that come with her. She usually comes with five escort bees. If any of those bees block that entrance, the queen might not be able to escape. So if one of those bees dies and blocks it, it's not good. So you usually put it upwards facing. But there's another little bit to that, and that's that the candy here on a hot day could melt and you don't want it to drool on the queen. So you don't want to put it like that. The best idea would be to put it like that. So if the candy did melt, it could go down and out of the cage like that and hopefully the queen's up here and still okay. So I'd recommend putting it in like that in between the frame so you find a spot that's not too sticky with honey. You don't want to press honey against it because you don't want to drown the queen in honey. So you'd put it in like this. So bearing in mind this is now eight hours or a day later and then the queen will hatch out of that cage in a, in a day or two and hopefully she's a good mated queen and the hive accepts her and she'll start laying. But back to what we were doing, we're going to let them raise their own queen. For anyone just tuning in, we have bee eggs now in both, bo in both boxes so the bees will then raise their own queen in the hive that doesn't have a queen. So now it's a case of just filling in the empty frames and putting the lids back on. I'm going to put this brood nest back together here. If you're new to beekeeping, do wear gloves. These bees are getting a little bit toey now. That's okay. Um, in this colony that's got less bees, I'm actually going to avoid putting a lot of the honey from this hive into it. Reason being, is you want enough bees to look after the combs really nicely and if you don't then in this area where there's lots of hive beetles especially at the moment the honey will make a, a great feast for them and they'll lay their babies into the honey so often better off if you're taking a, a split from a hive the hive with, with less bees um, leave the honey out provided there's forage around for them to forage on so I'll just put the next frame in and a good idea to stay onto the hive beetles. Make sure you check your, your slider to see what's going on. You don't want your new colony to be taken over by beetles. So in the eight frame boxes, there's space on either edge, which is nice later, like so. So just center your frames. In the um, 10 frame box, there, it is quite tight and that's just the sizing that we have from history from uh, beehives being started from kerosene boxes and all sorts of things. I'm going to lever this um, comb over a bit if I can and put a fresh one down this side. Although there's a bit of comb there too. I don't want to disturb them a great deal at the moment while we're doing this split. So I'm actually going to leave that back against the wall. There's a little bit of burr comb there to clean up. But I'm going to make the choice just to put the new combs, new frames on this side of the hive. Generally you'd put them like that on the outside. Okay. So 10 frames are quite tight. You do need to push the frames down into the box. So we've now got two hives, both with bee eggs. They can both raise a queen if, if they haven't got one. One of them will have the queen. It'll become clear pretty soon. The advantages of introducing a queen is they get about three weeks ahead of, of doing it like this. So there will be a little bit of downtime as they raise a queen and there's no eggs laying. The, the cycle of a queen is about 16 days. So let's say this hive works out they haven't got a queen in, 
in three days time. I lay an egg, 16 days later she hatches, then she's got to go on a mating flight, then she has to come back and lay eggs. So you won't expect to see, see a baby brood in this box for about a month. So you can come back and check in about a month's time for, for bees in that. You can check a little bit earlier, maybe three weeks, but um, the eggs will be quite small at that stage. Or you could look for a queen in about, in about uh, maybe 19 days, they should have made a queen. So you will need to keep an eye on it. If they don't get it together to make a queen, you'll either need to put those frames back and merge the two hives together, or you'll need to buy in a queen, or put in some more frames with bee eggs in them for them to have another go. So that's a process of, of making a hive split. I called it an even split, but in this case, I ended up just taking those three frames because there was about six frames of brood, and I didn't want to put the um, honey in for reasons of the hive beetles. So next we just need to put the lids on. And for anyone just tuning in, we did move the hive across. The original location of the new, of the, of the hive was here. So the bees, if we have a look at the front, are returning to both hives, which is what you want. You want a nice even spread between the two. Now, we're just going to put the lids on now. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, um, put them in the comments below and we'll endeavour to answer them. Have we got any questions coming in, Leah? Uh, we've just got one that's come in and um, she put her, um, the super on her brood box when it was 80% full of bees. Bees then moved into the super, started filling it with honey, but then all moved back down to the brood box. Okay, what you'll need to do in, in that case, so the situation is the super went on, the bees started filling it, and then the numbers of bees decreased. So what you'll need to do is have a good look around at what's going on. It could be that the nectar flow really shut off and they ate that, ate that honey and, and moved down, or there could be an issue with your brood nest. Either the queen um, could be not laying, could be not there, or there could be a, a uh, pest or disease issue. So when your colony shrinks, when other colonies are, are growing, there's usually some reason for it. So take a look and, and see what's going on in the brood box. As always, if you're not sure what you're doing, get help from experienced beekeepers, contact your local bee club. We've also got some, some training material on our YouTube channel, which you can tune into. Thanks for watching. <laughs>